Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report, and we are joined by the uh, remarkable, the intellectually uh, with it, Dr. Michael Kaufman is not only a scientist, but also a believer. And Dr. Mike, uh, I want you to explain how important this book is, America Plundered. I consider, and I've said this before, we have lots of really good books that we discuss uh, on our program, but this book, Plundered, How Progressive Ideology is Destroying America, you're an environmental scientist, you're a, 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 an environmentalist, a real environmentalist, not a phony, in terms of resource use, usage. You've blown giant holes the size of a, could put a jetliner through, in terms of the false uh, uh, thesis and dogma that the globalists are trying to use about the carbon credit garbage that's being imposed on the poor Australian population, which, by the way, are great listeners of the program. We have the carbon credit system and so on is tied right back into this whole theology that goes back to, as you show in your book, a fantastic table on page 28 that compares John Locke and the Rousseau system of government and the comparison of the models based on, based on whether or not we are made in the image of a creator and our rights come from our creator. Uh, so tell us the genesis of this book and what kind of response, because I'm sure you're doing lots of shows, you're getting lots of response, but we literally are walking like dead men over a cliff in the Grand Canyon into a precipice of disaster. And uh, uh, we need people like yourself to wake up the population that we need to refound America. We need to bring back people of every nation to understand that your nation, your rights don't come from your government, that we as human beings are sacred and that the population of Earth should not be subject to Agenda 21 and the destructive ideas of a global elite that are socio-psychopaths, that are devil-worshipping bohemian grovesters that want to see the death of humanity just for their own pleasure. Oh, you're, you're absolutely correct. And how I got started on this, I've actually written six books, uh, starting back with the environmental movement back in the 1990s, and several books there, and then in the 2000s begin to expand that into other arenas, what is going on in the geopolitical arena, na- and nationally and internationally, because you just can't look at one little segment. You've got to look at the broad cover of what they're trying to do. And, of course, as you just said, they're trying to create a world government where you have an absolute control of a central by the central government of, of, of the world is probably going to be the United Nations, although probably not in exactly the same form that the United Nations is in right now. But nonetheless, <clears throat> they want to create this, and of course the United Nations, assuming that's what will be the world government, uh, really will not have the power. It will be these global masters behind the scenes. And I talk about this, give you actual references and so forth, of people who have actually read the material of this elite, uh, basically the banking elite. I think most of you in the listening audience probably know what I'm talking about. And the fact that uh, these people have been trying for well over 100 years through the generations of gradually bringing us to a point where we have a world government and them in control. And how what happened was, in back in the 1990s, I was leading a multi-million dollar research effort onto the effects of uh, global global warming and, and acid rain on our ecosystems here in the United States uh, in lead up to the reauthorization of the Clean Air Act when the Clean Air Act was reauthorized it had nothing to do with research we as a nation we spent over 10 billion dollars in research it was good research uh, in this in the whole process of trying to define what needed to be done to protect the environment in the atmosphere well it was a political um, effort had nothing to do with science. It was money down a rat hole, and I said to myself, well, there's no point in me doing any research if it's never going to be used, and <clears throat> began to follow the money trail like you should, and, of course, it led back to this agenda, originally back to the the environmental agenda, which is really the spear tip of what they're trying to do at this particular point in time, and then eventually into the geopolitical issues that we're now facing with right now and the fact that we have uh, basically, a world is starting to crumble. Uh, I think deliberately. I don't see how we can look at it any other way uh, because of this agenda, so that they can come in riding on a white horse when they're all desperate and out of food to offer us a plan that will be a world government with them, of course, at control. That's where I see us going probably in the next year or two. It's not going to be very long. No, I don't think and it is. In fact, uh, the timeline I see, just to put some, some um, without specific dates. 
I see Fukushima starting last Wednesday to have a major critical release of radioiodine, and I want to right. get some environmental responses on this because we now have from reports from TEPCO that radioiodine has surged dramatically from cooling pool four. We know that the annealing due to gamma rays and neutrons is literally shattering the physical structure of the metals and the concrete at the facility, so it's literally falling apart like a flaky pie crust, as I use that analogy. We're looking at the massive extinction level event that's going to cause the evacuation of 40 million Japanese, probably within the time of a level six earthquake, which will not only hit there, but if you have a major quake or volcanic eruption at Mount Fuji, dozens of nuclear reactors in northern Japan are going to go super critical. We have the Daini plant and plants on the other side of, Me- of the island on Honshu that actually were seriously damaged by the earthquake, where the containment lost over 400 tons of water just in one, uh, one nuclear reactor, literally hundreds of miles away. So it's not just the tsunami that struck there. Reactor cool number one had lost containment with the nuclear, uh, with the attack uh, just by the earthquake on there immediately. And I see that we've got the meltdown of Europe, which is now proceeding. And after this meeting on the weekend, Merkel is very defensive. And the call for bonds, Germany is not getting uh, the, the sway. She's a lone voice now for this defiant uh, idea that they're going to have austerity fascism now with the election of Holland. Uh, they are now talking about the agreement on the weekend with Obama. They're going to keep the printing presses going. They're not going to yeah. stop it. This is like pouring blood into a patient that's had 10 gunshot wounds. And I've been there in the emergency department. When somebody has a massive traumatic injury or multiple gunshots, you can't close off all the holds. You can't put enough pressure on them to even get them to the operating room to close off the bleeding. And no matter how much blood product, you're just diluting their blood. And what's going to happen is Europe will collapse. It's only a matter of time before that happens. And when it does, by the way, this is designed, they want to bring in a new financial world order where they stay the hemorrhaging of it with gel foam, if you want to call it financially, gel foam. <laughs> and then what they're going to do is give us a biometric world currency with a G20 where the American dollar and our credit system is no longer under the control of our Congress. And right. our Congress, Senate, and President are now vestigial. And people don't understand what the word vestigial. It's almost like the appendix is a vestigial organ. It was there so your your lower bowel had a colony of bacteria that could literally infect the food as it went into your lower colon to help digest and absorb the last bit of nutrients before it expelled the now dehydrated stool because that's all the lower bowel is, is a dehydrator. But with this vestigial organ now of the presidency and the Congress and Senate will exist no longer to control cash and credit, that they haven't done their job in the past. Now the last remnants will be gone after the statements by Obama that NATO is transferring the Aegis naval system to NATO command, the uh, the early warning system, radar system in Turkey, and the uh, new five Predator drones, the most advanced technology under NATO command. And he made statements last year with Libya and Tunisia he has no intentions of taking orders from Congress, but will answer to NATO and the United Nations. We don't have a president. We have a proxy minion, one of the, quote, ten kings that give their power to the one kingdom for an hour uh, that we have in the end. And if this man, this abominator, gets reelected, we have literally the destroyer of America in the White House. Yes, we do. And I can't overemphasize that enough. Uh, I may disagree a little bit as to how far down we are down that road, but boy, by not by much. No, and we're we're, we're dealing with minor minor differences. And by the way, this is just opinion. We're not saying that it's going yeah. to happen at a certain time. But I can tell you, there's no doubt that I think that the uh, that the collapse of Europe, which is going to proceed, I think this summer you're going to see a major earthquake in, in the European economic system. That I can see that the the summer yeah. of discontent with with Japan having a massive evacuation, if there's a level six earthquake, which is almost certain to happen before the fall, we're going to have a massive radiation release. And once they start mass evacuations and the reality strikes home that they can no longer put Japanese smiley faces and say the radiation will hurt you, people are going to panic and realize they've been lied to and lied to and lied to and they lied themselves. And the real environmentalists have not been doing their job. The EPA and the CDC and the United Nations and the IAEA have done nothing, squat, and there has been no response to Murata, the international ambassador from Japan, to the United Nations. Nothing has been done. Yes, and I, I agree with you. I know we're coming up to a break, but it's just one of those things where we have to be cognizant of how much they're lying to us. They're lying to us about everything. They're even lying to most of the lies, and that's why with your book is so important plundered how progressive ideology is destroying America. Worse than Fukushima. Back in a moment.
Welcome back, and uh, let's explore some of the amazing principles inside this book, uh, America Plundered, and why this is such an important book. And again, the book is americaplundered.com. You also have another website. That address, Dr. Mike Kaufman, is? americaplundered.com, americaplundered.com. I'll just tell you right now, the book and you have another website too, though. yesterday. You, yeah. It'll be out in two weeks, June 5th. June 5th, yeah, that's amazing. Now, tell us about some of the most profound things that people ask you, because you've done a number of interviews. When you, There's probably things that surprised you of how important they were when you wrote, you wrote them and the responses you got back from people either by emails or comments. Well, you know, it's, a, it's, it's amazing the kind of comments I get back is that people have no idea really of the, the constitutional principles that are so critically important to our liberty or freedom and wealth creation. Uh, because we've never been taught those, never, in our, in our public school systems, maybe in a few private schools, but that's about all. Very wow. few people, other than if they're, you know, our age or middle age or something, and they, they've kind of got a sense about how, how important property well, rights are, but don't well, really understand why they're so important. Well, they I read this discussion. book, and all of a sudden it becomes very, very clear why uh, they had this sense that we were destroying something very fundamental to their 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 their. their lives, really, their lives and their wealth and so forth. Well, let's compare America to Canada. If you live in Canada, you have double the chance of dying of a health problem of the same level, yes. even though it's socialized medicine. If you want to emigrate, and I talked to my friend, Dr. Craig Heller, who's on the program regularly, who's at the CR Wellness Center, and he caught me because I was going into the hyperbaric chamber and going off to work out today at the Wellness Center. Uh, and I was down there to work out, and he said, you know, one of his friends considered going to New Zealand. He found out to buy into their socialized healthcare system, you have to give them thirty-five thousand dollars, and you have to have about you know three quarters of a million dollars to half a million dollars to be able to get citizenship. You can't get citizenship; you can live there. To mm-hmm. get citizenship, you have to buy your way in, and then wow. if you make over thirty-five thousand dollars a year, they tax you so much. The only thing you get to keep is thirty-five thousand a year, which most people can work if they work three days a week. So it basically makes people useless and dependent on the state. And if the state decides that you're a useless eater or they're not going to provide alternative care, innovative care, or new advanced treatments for any of the 21st century illness or new ways of treating things that are more cost-effective, cheaper, and safer so they're not going to damage you like, you know, the old story of chemotherapy, radiation, et cetera. Yeah. No, that's not available. So in other words, innovation is squashed, uh, private property is squashed. No, everybody's taken care of by the state from cradle to grave, which is Obama wants to have. It's a form of basically turning America into not a bunch of innovative, you know, God-ordained sovereigns, but turning us into members of a herd. They want to turn America and population into a giant herd, with the herd master being Obama with a stick, like a Kenyan herder. Well, you know, the last time I was on the program with you, I read a segment out of the book that was written back in 1970 by a group of industries, the federal government, <coughs> and some key Stanford University and, and the such, that actually did a research study back in the late 60s, wrote this set of goals that they wanted to accomplish by the time we reached the year 2000. And that's exactly what they said. You know, I could read it again, but I just I hate to read over the air. But the fact is that they want us to be able to be useful idiots that they can manipulate and, and so forth. All we have to do is be kept in pleasure and so forth with football games and basketball, baseball, uh, drugs, you name it. it, whatever your pleasure is, just be having a good time. Uh, if you need some money, we'll give it to you through welfare or whatever the case might be. And, and, and of course, and printing, money is a, is, is, and printing money is an indirect tax. It's basically saying, Dr. Deagle, Dr. Mike Coffin, all the work you've done for all years, don't worry about it, we're going to steal it. And the way we're going to steal is we're going to print so damn much money and give it to the Europeans and everybody else from the Bahraini bankers that are going to launder illegal money and use this as a way of kind of laundering. We're going to make sure that that money that's in your 401ks, your house equity, and your pension funds, and anything, even gold coins in your, in your, in your safe, we're going to dilute because we're going to print so damn much money yes. that we're going to lock the world with debt, and eventually we're going to collapse the system. So in order for you to buy and sell, you literally have to stick your eyeball up to a machine that measures your retinal scan or an iris scan, put your digital face into a digital facial machine that measures the terahertz waves, again, the same waves they use, by the way, 
for the scalar weapons to cause apoptosis that I, I was actually a doctor taking care of people at Pratt & Whitney back in 88 to 94. The same waves they use in these body scanners in the airports that can cause skin cancer and other forms of cancer and cataracts. And yet the morons will argue with you. I remember going through the last time I said, I'm not going through that scanner. Oh, no, it's safe. I said, do you know who you're talking to? I said, I'm an environmental doctor. Oh, no, our company and the physicist tell you, I said, you're talking to a world-class expert. I said, I'm going to give you the physics of this. I said, this causes cancer, and they're all over their eyeballs. You can see all the white around their eyes there, TSA. And I said it loud enough, because I'm a big mouth anyway. And everybody else is standing there like, you <laughs> can tell they were, getting what I called, they were getting what I call the anal wink sign. In other words, everybody was, the, the cheeks of their butt was coming together, and they go, oh, bad idea. I said, I'm going for my pat down, pat down city. And I walked over, kind of doing a dance over there from the pat down, said, doctor, you get a pass. You don't have to have a pat down. I said, Hallelujah. So I walk right through the metal detector and the wall stood the other side and everybody's looking at me like, well, why do I have to go through it? I said, why don't you open your mouth? Why don't you open your mouth? You know, the problem is people are sheep. I'm not a sheep. I'm like, if you want to call it, I'm a, I don't know what kind of animal you call it. Let's put it this way. I'm not a sheep. I'm not a wolf. Maybe I'm a good dog. Maybe I'm a, a, a German shepherd. Maybe I'm a, a, a Labrador retriever. But don't mess with me because I got jaws and I can clamp down hard. And I certainly yep. can see what's coming on. And unfortunately, most people are still going. Uh, yep, it's crazy. And they'll they want to spit. They want to spit on me and say, "Diggle, you're that's just a conspiracy theory. You're one of those conspiracy theorists." Say, you know what? I just wipe off the spit and say, "Keep on spitting. You're going to run out of spit one of these days." And that's just that's true. You know, it really. What's happened here in Europe the last? I'm changing the subject. I said segue. Same topic though. The fact is, though, that they have been lying to us about what's happening in Europe. If you go back and read what we wrote a year ago this month, exactly what we wrote about a year ago this month right. is happening today. Right. Uh, and and we are seeing major riots and so forth in Europe. You're not we, seeing those on see, television, folks. You ain't seen nothing yet. You wait till this. They they say they're they're not going to they're going to do growth rather than austerity fascism. Yeah, they're right. going to say that BS. They're, uh, what's happening, as they're printing more money, credit's contracting. No businesses in Europe, no private citizens can get credit. They're cutting education, they're cutting everything. For example, in France, which I think we should have here, I think if you have the mental capacity, you should be able to get an education at a reasonable cost. It may not be zero, but a reasonable cost like when I went to school, so that if you want to be a Ph.D. or an engineer or whatever, it doesn't matter what your background, you can afford to have it without a giant debt at the end of it. We yeah. want to make sure that our money is bilaterally exchanged with other nations, not with a global credit system controlled by the G20 and some global government. We need to make bilateral arrangements like Bretton Woods. Now, all of this is based on the idea that America has sovereignty. If you don't have a Congress and Senate that are no longer controlling money, but an international body of rule makers, you don't have, you're not a citizen anymore. You have a vestigial government and you're now a, a, a sheep in a herd called America. Right. You have no private property. You'll be forced into the super compact cities like Agenda 21 and the Global 2000 policy and all the other things that have been planned. And you were one of the main fighters against that. So when we come back, we need to hear more what you did with senators in the late 1990s to stop that horror from happening. back to the Nutramedical Report, and uh, let's go through some of this ideology and how important it is. Let's compare, for example, and to be honest with you, and I hear people, I talk about people that we have a two cult leaders. We have Obama, which is a thousand times worse than Mitt Romney. If I'm forced to pick one or the other, I'll pick Romney. But I only want Romney in there if we have tons of congressmen and senators and enough thousand choke chains on his damn Mormon neck that he doesn't even twitch sideways to think he's going to do anything like $50 or free abortions or allow Obamacare in any way, shape, or form to survive, or that he's going to take away personal property or not destroy the National Defense Authorization Act, which needs to be completely scuttled, or the Expo oh, yeah. Expatriation Act, or any of the other horrors that have been extended, not only started by George Bush, but extended and amplified dramatically by the Abominator. Uh, we need to make sure that all the parts of the Patriot Act are gone. 
We need to bring our troops back from foreign uh, excursions, and we need to probably protect our 51st state, which is the state of Israel, by completely not only sanctioning against these other nations, but stopping stupid things like the Kirk Amendment that allows China to get a free pass or get $2 oil uh, from Iraq so they can sell it on the open market or refine it in their giant refineries in China. We're yeah. we're crazy, and we're letting the globalists run us into the ground when we should have all the economic, intellectual, and oil resources. Our country could be like a the, most, the richest country on earth with all our factories brought back here because we have oil is so cheap. It would be insane to expropriate and, ex, and export our industry to China or any of these other countries. We you know, then that be, is a very very good point that I think really undercuts all the arguments against us on that issue because we have enough oil we have enough coal we have enough natural gas to be completely independent of every other nation for a minimum of 150 years and that's yeah. that's being pessimistic I and mean, here's and a, yet, a point i want to make to that develop it i want here's a point i want to make that people don't understand we're not just talking about energy i know about all kinds of things like advanced carburation for 100 plus mile a gallon cars yeah, and all those right. other things yep. if let's say tomorrow we had Dr. Nakamatsu, because Dr. Nakamatsu is a good friend of Tim Alexander, who showed him an actual patent for energy out of the vacuum and, and technology to literally take water and create energy. The fact is, despite if we had all the energy we wanted, we had plasma distribution lines, we had geothermal, we had wind and everything, we'd still have 70% of the oil needs of the world would be dependent on everything from petrochemicals to plastics to everything else from oil. You're not going to get rid of oil. Oil is the part of the, literally, the basilisk of abiotic oil, which is not made by dinosaurs and ferns. It, our yep. civilization is dependent on it, and it's not for energy. People think, oh, that's because you can drive your cars. If you had plasma energy cars going on helium-3 nuclear ion miniaturized tokamak fusion reactors in your car, and it was had an anti-gravitonic you know, plasma field around the bottom so it could float just like, you know, the 25th century and your, you know, Blade Runner flying around your car, guess what? You're still going to need oil and gas. You're still going to need petrochemicals. You can't get rid of them. And this idea yeah. that somehow you could it's the end of the oil age, these people are morons. If we didn't have it here, we'd have to explore in the solar system to find it out on some moon of Saturn Absolutely. or whatever. Absolutely. So this idea that, well, we're going to get rid of it, we're going to have the end of the oil age, these people are lying garbage. And the fact is, even well, if we have all these advanced line, energy... I think a lot, a lot of them, though, Bill, are so bound up in their ideology that they cannot think out of what they have been told. You forgot they a letter. Really do. Uh, I mean, ideology. There are those who know exactly yeah. what they're doing. These people are evil. Well, yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah, of people they're, doing they're, evil things because they're, they're, they have, they're locked into an ideology that just blinds them. Yeah, I like the word evil, though. You know what's no need about the word evil? It's live backwards. Yeah. And I, and I think one of the letters missing in, in, in we call ideology is the word letter T, idiotology. It basically <laughs> wants to make us idiots to believe their dogma so it destroys our sovereignty and our pro personal property. And the fact is, a dollar now should be a dollar in 10 years' time, and the house equity and our pensions... We need to have a firewall so our Social Security plans are topped up so it's money we put in is going to be there when we retire. It should yeah. have a health care system where alternative and other innovative care allows everybody to have affordable health care and gives us a tax break if we donate into a, a fund that can allow. And I'm writing up a document for AMAC, AMAC.us for Dan Weber, because I have a multi-point plan that can specifically fix that. I have a multi-point plan for the economy. There's no excuse for all of these problems in a godly way to be solved. Yep. There's no excuse. None. There's no There's none. We have no no shortage of anything. It's like Buckminster Fuller uh, uh you know who said you know the the universe is full of, of not only entropy which is a lie but neg entropy which is the ability it's called do entropy creativity. The God literally says nothing shall be restrained from them in their imagination. It says now they are one people in one place. We got the internet. All the nations are coming together now. We have translators. There's nothing withheld from our imagination if we turn back to the Creator. If we turn back to our sovereign rights and our genetic sovereignty, which means don't start making half human, half monsters. Don't start making super soldiers. Do correct genetic illness, but do not start trying to create. You know, we call the demigods, like I call mm -hmm. the spiders, Spider Man generation. And that's what these fools are up to. They want to kill most of us off and make themselves into demigods. I agree. I agree. And it, it's what we're doing, basically, is what God has said that He will not allow us to do. And it's just a matter of time before something really breaks loose. 
and I, I finished my last chapter of Plundered by taking by actually talking about why it is imperative that we get back to our Christian foundations because there's no way to save this nation unless we do. There is absolutely yeah, and, no yeah, way. In other words, what you're saying is the absolute truth here. And it's a good example of how bad the judgment is when we have uh, these kind of choices, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Yeah. We've got Tweedledee, Obama, who is an avowed Sunni, high-level Mason, by the way, pederastic, bisexual, now, quote, the first gay president, who is a high-level Sunni uh, Muslim and a globalist. And then we have uh, Mitt Romney, who's a high-level Mormon, who's considerable, by the way, considerably better than, uh, than, than Obama, considerably better. I mean, literally anybody but Obama. And that, by yep. the way, that also means anybody but Hillary Clinton, because if you think Obama's bad, if Hillary Clinton becomes president, oh, my God, are we ever in trouble? I know, and that's a real possibility. It could happen in the next few well, months. Well, I think, I think it's possible that, uh, that the squeeze that's going on and removing him from the voter rolls in, in, in Arizona in the next few months is going to catch on. And when this happens, there's going to be like a feeding frenzy like piranhas when the donkey falls into the Amazon River and it's stripped to the bone in four minutes. Yeah. Obama yeah. is toast. He already ticked off the West. We have reports from Lindsey Williams and others that when he shut down the XL pipeline, he really ticked them off, and he basically had private meetings and said he did it for his Muslim buddies in Saudi Arabia because a large part yep. of his campaign in 2008 was funded by the Saudi government. People don't understand he is literally a functionary for the global dynastic wealth of these maniac Arabs. Yeah, I, I, you can't really fault that logic. It's just one of those things where he has given so much information and done so many things to support what you're saying that it is almost impossible to so deny. It, it, even his masters are ticked. He's like, he's a bad puppet. Bad. Bad Obamanocchio. And his nose is growing longer and longer, and he's been sent to the island where they all turn to donkeys. Yeah. Well, he's going to become a donkey here very soon. Well, i really starting to see that. Even even the political arena now is beginning to see a lot of Democrats turn against him. And that's not real surprising, because really the progressives, the progressive Democrats have left the true Democrats in the dust and really thrown them under the bus. It, and a lot know, of these you know, true... The biggest anomaly, I think, is blue dog Democrat. How can someone say they're a blue dog Democrat or Christian, say, uh, uh, you know, let's say yeah. a Southern Baptist or whatever, and yet say they're a Democrat? I mean, like, it, you know, where's your brain? Did you leave it in your, you know, in your dresser? Right. Where's, what, right. what is this? You know, how can you say, and if you are, you better reform the party. The first thing is you do a bombinectomy. Secondly, come back to the fact that the birth certificate, now we actually have documents that prove that Obama was born in Kenya. I talked to Dr. Corsi before he went there, after he got injured by Odinga, yep. Obama's cousin, came back and needed spine surgery because of the trauma and the, and the abuse he suffered while he was researching, and even talked to Obama's grandmother, who was so pleased to talk to Jerome Corsi and told him face-to-face -face that she was yep. outside the delivery room in Mombasa, right. Kenya. Okay? So let's get with it. We need to stop this foolishness. And if people out there have spittle, guess what? Someday your mosa is going to dry up when disaster strikes and you're not going to have any more spittle for Dr. Deagle, Dr. Kaufman, or anybody else who wants to wake up, you dummies. Wake up now. It's getting late. Welcome back. Where's it going next? Well, this is a prediction and analysis of what I see. I see two major events happening in the next six months that are going to change the world. The meltdown of Europe and the meltdown of Fukushima. I see uh, the election going to be a disaster. I see it's very possible that we will have the uh, removal of Obama and a transition to, to uh, Biden with the emergence of Hillary Clinton as being, quote, the candidate for uh, president for 2012. I see uh, Mitt Romney having to scramble to get his base, which basically is a conservative right that are very having to hold their nose because the Mormons believe some very, very nasty things, including when you go to the temple, you do a uh, temple ordinance in front of someone that plays Satan and says, are we under the doctrines and covenants? Man must fall so he may be as, as God, both knowing good and evil. Therefore, Satan plays the role of the good guy with a black hat. Yeah. Now, people need to grasp this. And if you're assaulted by this and you're a Mormon, 
If you want to argue with Dr. Deagle, you've picked the argument with the wrong dude. I know things that if you've been born a Mormon and your ancestors go back right to the time when they went out west in the chuck wagons, I know stuff that will shock you that you and your ancestors don't want to know. The Mormons at the hot top level are all spiritually and physically polygamous, that they worship Satan as a brother of Jesus, that they believe all these things that are so horrendous. But if you think Mormonism is bad, Islam is a thousand times worse. It's the most evil system ever created by Satan himself on the earth. And if we put a choke chain on, on Mitt Romney and make sure that he make sure the person who'd issue is dealt with in the Supreme Court that Obamacare is struck down, that we pull back from stupid wars, that we don't integrate our military like Obama promised with NATO to pass over yep. Aegis, uh, and, you know, naval system. We just finished building the damn things at billions of dollars of cost for the American public, and he's going to pass over our naval Aegis system under NATO command, the Turkish uh, radar base there, and uh, our advanced Predator drones. I mean, how crazy is this? Putting American what? soldiers' military under NATO command preemptively, and then not even asking for congressional approval on wars, but saying he's going to ask the NATO commanders and the United Nations, who were his real boss, which is the Rothschild bankers and the global elite from the Bilderberger meeting that are meeting in a few weeks, and of course in a couple of weeks the 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 pederastic bisexual uh, maniacs that go to Bohemian Globe that do a burning of care because they do human sacrifice there and body parts float down the Russian River and people say oh it doesn't happen well you're an idiot and you don't need to face reality that the evil rule the world because you are a moron and those people out there who say that they're the Dr. Deagle's on a roll today yeah I'm upset with people that think that I have a axe to grind with evil I have a bigger axe to grind with those people who won't do anything when they see evil Again, evil, as it says, thrives because good men do nothing. Nothing. You know who, who was the founder of the founding father that said that it was? I don't remember. Yeah. I'm going to see if there's any of our, if our audience can remember that and see if they can email me. I won't <laughs> tell them the answer. Yeah. I but thought it was, it was one of our founding fathers. British, British individual that said that. That's right. But it was requoted by one of our founding fathers. Okay. So, anyway, so. Tell us more about your book. This is important. People understand why is what this is, book What so it important? really does, uh, you, in the listening audience, you may have a pretty good understanding of what's going on, but I really doubt that you have a overview, a complete overview. And that's what this book does, is it provides a complete overview of what's happening, who's doing it, how it's being done, how they're basically tricking the American people through deception and making a lie into the truth and the truth into the lie. I give examples and, and so forth and show you exactly step-by-step step how they're doing this. And it will basically not only help you, but if you give your book to your neighbor or friend or, or, or brother or sister or something like that, for them to read and tell them they have to read it, they will walk into the voting booth in November a totally different person than they are right now because well, they, they will they, be in a state of shock. They need at least half a dozen copies. They need a copy for themselves, a, a copy for their congressman, their city councilman, and their state senator, and their congressman. They need to have a copy for their relatives they can pass around. So they need at least a half a dozen copies. So when they order it, don't just order one book and just read it and say, oh, my, so bad. Stop thinking that you can solve this. We need to, number one, pray and ask God to inspire our leaders in Congress and Senate to put a stop to this and make certain that if Mitt Romney gets in there, he only does exactly our bidding. In other words, he's like the, yes. uh, the he's the bus boy for the conservative right, and we have to realize the president is not a senior executive office. He is literally the servant of the public. The problem is they want they think and Obama thinks that he's been elected der Führer, and then he can literally treat the people like they're an ATM machine. It's ridiculous. That's, it really is, I and mean, he has demonstrated that time after time after time that he he's acting like a king. He really does not. He's a pharaoh. You and I yeah. as equals at all with him. No, no, Period. no. I call I call him Baraka Naughton. How's that? Yeah, that's right. By the way, this book basically on the last uh, set of pages before the end of the book, I give a set of eight steps that you can take to ask your candidates at whatever level of government doesn't matter. In fact, the lower levels of government is as important as the the higher ones. Uh, what they believe in, how to ask them the, what those key questions to reveal as to whether or not they're a progressive or a liberal or a true conservative that wants to uphold the Constitution. If Whoa. you do that, you're going to be able to then tell other people in your neighborhood, your friends, and so forth, 
what these people represent, because one of the things we might understand who's going to be running for candidate and president and so forth, or uh, Congress and so forth, senators, but nonetheless, what we do not know is what our local elections are going to be. Who do these people represent? They're just a name normally, and we need to do a very, very good job in defining who they are and which candidates will uphold the constitutional principles. I don't care if it's the city council or the county commission or the school board or whatever the case might be. We need to get good people. At, we need to get these progressives out of these offices. I don't know what it is about power, but these progressives love power. They're drawn yeah, to it I, like I to I, yeah, these are people that wanted to be the class president. These are the social psychopaths that have a, a burning yeah. desire to be the control freaks, to control everything. They feel this solve of, oh, yes, so now I'm in control. I feel okay temporarily. The anxiety that completely consumes me is okay as long as I have my, my hands and my control completely on the levers of the lives of all those that I consider inferior to me because I'm the socio psychopath. They don't care yeah. that I'm so important that I should control everything. That's what their minds are thinking. We're not dealing with people that are whole human beings. We're dealing with people that basically are, we want to call it, parchment machine. They're almost like, uh, you know, the Terminator. Uh, they have, I call them the people of clay and iron. They have trans-dimensional demonic entities driving or avataring them to say, you don't need to be a human being. You don't need to be concerned about others. Of course, the God said in the Bible, love God first, not right. yourself, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. So what he's really saying is, if you don't love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to have a decent society. You're not going to have personal property. You're not going to have liberty. That means the unborn child, the 90-year-old, that's they're deciding at an ethics committee, oh, gee, we brought in Obamacare. You got free health care, but by the way, the ethics committee says grandma doesn't get dialysis. So you, sitting around... You, 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 Ray, I, we're almost out of time. I want to get this in. Yeah. I have spent a whole chapter tracing the progressive movement as to where it, where it was uh, originated, how it developed, and so forth. And we have psychiatrists back in the 1800s describing their early progressives. They didn't call them progressives then, but they described the early progressives. And they're just exactly the same thing as the progressives today. They called them automatons because they all act in unison, like right. they were blind and, and, and just basically staring out with vacant eyes and doing what the people above them want them to do. It's really shocking. And I go in there and I describe exactly what they found back in the 1800s that we're seeing again today. So what you're talking about is like Star Trek. It's like another issue of Star Trek, only we call them the progressive Borg. How's that? Yeah, that's right. You got That's a very good relationship. I had not thought about the Borg, but you're right. They're Borg. They're Borg. You can see the little hoses running out of their neck and their brain, and actually they're connected because I'm, I'm John, one of many, you know, this kind yeah. of thing. It's like, ah. Uh... You, you, you've seen how schools of fish in the ocean all of a sudden in unison will turn 90 degrees, all yeah. the same fish at the same time, exactly the same instant, that's what these progressives do. If someone comes out with a, they love slogans, they love signs, they love slogans. They come out with a slogan that seems to be catchy, and by the next day, everybody's doing it. I think it I figured out really what it is. Phenomenal. We, we, most people can't see it, but I, I think in my my spiritual mind, what I'm now visualizing is that demons are like schooling fish, and when they yep. avatar individuals, they move the people. They're psychologically, spiritually, in their actions, like schools of these fish, because the the demonic entities that are avataring them are schooling creatures. Yep. Well, they like the group. That's quite, that's the fact. Yeah, and they're amazing. acting like a group. Yeah, get this book, amazing. Plundered: How Progressive Ideology Is Destroying America. This AmericaPlunder.com. AmericaPlunder.com. If you get this book and you put it right beside your Bible, you're gonna your eyes will be open as they say the scales will fall, the the plugs will come from your ears. And you'll most will dry up, and there'll be no more spittle for Dr. Kaufman, Dr. Deagle, or anybody else like Alex Jones that wants to wake you up. You'll decide to prepare, and the first preparation is to pray and repent, and then get moving, because all hell is about to hit the proverbial fan. Take care, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow with a remarkable program. Harley Schlanger's back, and uh, Dr. Michael Brown. We're going to talk about same-sex marriage of both the first gay president and much, much more. You don't want to miss it. Back tomorrow on the Nutramedical Report, Play an Iron Show.